Welcome to Flashes of Liberty, a minicast project from MereLiberty.com. Discover those who have advanced liberty throughout history and around the world with your host, Carrie Baldwin. World War II ended in 1945, but it didn't end the economic and political fallout. This was the year of Winston Churchill's famous Iron Curtain speech. The Iron Curtain was the metaphorical and eventually literal divide between Eastern and Western Europe. It ran from Arctic Russia through the middle of Germany and down to Bulgaria, ending at the Black Sea. This wall represented not only physical isolation of communists from the rest of the world, but a hard line between economic ideologies. This division raged on in America with the McCarthy era, but everyday Americans found themselves stuck between polarized sides. While intellectuals debated and politicians went on witch hunts, one American journalist sought to work out the facts. His name was Henry Hazlitt, and in 1946 he published Economics in One Lesson, a layman's introduction to the field of economics. Henry was born in 1894 in Philadelphia to Stuart and Bertha Hazlitt. His grandparents were immigrants from England, Ireland, and Germany. Henry's father died from diabetes when Henry was just an infant, and his mother later remarried and moved to Brooklyn. But Henry's stepfather died in 1907, leaving Henry to support his mother. Henry was a self-taught writer and economist. He originally wanted to be a psychologist, but his family situation kept him from completing a formal education. Henry tried and failed to get a job numerous times. He never worried about that, though. He remarked that, because of the free market, he could usually find a job the next day. With each job lost, he learned something new, and eventually was making enough to live on. Henry was a prolific writer. He eventually obtained writing positions among several top news organizations, including The Nation, The New York Times, and Newsweek. But he would soon be an unwelcome contributor because he refused to soften his stance on economics. With well over 6,000 writings, Henry condemned many American policy positions. These included the income tax, central banking, the New Deal, Keynesian theory of economics, socialism, war socialism, price controls, unionism, the welfare state, and deficits. He met, befriended, and eventually worked alongside many prominently known names, including Ayn Rand, philosopher Bertrand Russell, and Ludwig von Mises, among several others. Mises and his wife had fled German-occupied Europe and emigrated to America in 1940. Mises was a theoretical economist from Austria, and we'll discuss him in a later episode. Hazlitt arranged for Mises to contribute articles to the New York Times and helped him get a teaching position at New York University. Under the direction of Mises himself, Hazlitt penned Economics in One Lesson. It sold over a million copies and has been translated into ten languages. It still remains unsurpassed as the best introduction to economics. Here is an excerpt from Economics in One Lesson, Chapter 1. Quote, In addition to special interests, there is a second main factor that spawns new economic fallacies every day. This is the persistent tendency to see only the immediate effects of a given policy, and to neglect to inquire what the long-run effects of the policy will be. It is the fallacy of overlooking secondary consequences. In this lies almost the whole difference between good economics and bad. The bad economist sees only what immediately strikes the eye. The good economist also looks beyond. The distinction may seem obvious. Doesn't everybody know in his personal life that there are all sorts of indulgences, delightful at the moment, but disastrous in the end? Doesn't every little boy know that if he eats enough candy, he will get sick? Doesn't the fellow who gets drunk know that he will wake up the next morning with a ghastly stomach and a horrible head? Doesn't the dipsomaniac know that he is ruining his liver and shortening his life? Doesn't the Don Juan know that he is letting himself in for every sort of risk, from blackmail to disease? Do not the idler and the spendthrift know they are heading for a future of debt and poverty? Yet, when we enter the field of public economics, these elementary truths are ignored. End quote. Hazlitt wasn't just echoing Mises. His comments here harken back to the French Revolution and one particularly astute thinker, Frédéric Bastiat, who spoke about the seen and unseen and the fact that for all our effort to affect our empirical world, we cannot predict the demonstrable effect of unintended consequences. 
Henry's mark on the economic world can be seen today, as he was a founding board member of the Foundation for Economic Education, and his writings can be found at their website at fee.org and at the Mises Institute at mises.org. Thanks for listening to Flashes of Liberty. If you enjoyed today's episode, head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review. Flashes of Liberty is produced by me, Carrie Baldwin, at mereliberty.com and is patron-supported. Patrons have access to premium features through their ongoing monthly pledges. Become a patron and receive exclusive benefits by visiting patreon.com forward slash Carrie Baldwin. To explore the resources used for this episode, please visit flashesofliberty.com.